Hey everyone, uh, this has been a long time coming. I've been promising people for months I would make this video, so I figured it was about time to do it. I'm currently at the Super 8 Motel at Policon, which is a really fun thing. If you're into instant photography, I suggest you look into going. But today we're gonna make a, my super cheap, what I call my Dollar Tree copy stand. Uh, all you're gonna need is a ruler, some sort of knife, like a hobby knife, or uh, you could use an X-Acto knife, or a utility knife. A pencil would be nice, but I don't have one here. You can completely do it without it. And you're gonna need two sheets of black foam core. I just get these ones from the Dollar Tree. They work fine. But you want this sort of matte black. You don't want a glossy black. You want it to, to be a, a matte finish so it doesn't reflect pinpoint light. That's the whole point, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera around, get the set up, and we'll show you how to make one of these. Okay, so the first thing you do, you take the sheet of foam core off the end, you're gonna to wanna to take off about six inches. And you're gonna do this to both of them. Six inches off of each one. So what I do, since I don't have a pen, is I just take the knife, cut two small little slits. If you've never cut foam core before, the way to do it is you make a slit in the paper on one side Fold the board till it splits, and then cut the other side. Just like you would drywall, if you've ever done drywall before. Since my cheap Dollar Tree ruler isn't long enough to go all the way across, I have to make my arcs in a few spots. If you get it off by an eighth of an inch, it's not gonna matter, but the closer you can get, the better. So, let's do this. Super riveting stuff, but I'll do that so it folds, and then I'm gonna cut it, cut down this seam right here. Sorry about the squeaky chair. one go ahead and do the other one and you see what i did wrong there is i kind of peeled the end but it's not really going to hurt anything for this by the way if you have any questions when you're done watching the video Feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them just as soon as I can. That may end up being a day or two, but I will get to them as soon as I can. By the way, if you were to try to cut all the way through, one pass, A, it probably wouldn't come out very good, but B, you'd also end up cutting your table. I don't know about you, but I'd rather not cut the table. Of course, this is the hotel's table, not mine, but still. Must be a spot I didn't quite cut through it. There we go. There it goes.
take the two big pieces, set them to the side for right now. And what you need to do is figure out where the center of this board is. So I got 12 inches to here. Let's just do it to 10, make the math easy. I bet it's a 20 inch board. Yeah, this particular one's about 20 inches and you don't have to be super perfect, by the way. If you're off by a quarter inch either way, it's really not gonna matter. Same thing on this one. inches and just like we're cutting the other pieces we're just going to cut one side of this we're not going to cut it in two okay same thing on this one more important to get it straight than it is to worry about if it's dead center. So just take them and fold it. That's all you're doing, just a little bit, just enough to start breaking the foam. Why? We'll be going clear in a moment. And now you're going to take both sheets of, both of the large pieces that are left, and we're going to figure out how wide they are. We already know that it's 10 inches across this way, but of course your foam may be different. I'm gonna make a mark at 12. And it's actually a little bit less than 24 inches. I'm just gonna mark it at 12, that's fine. Uh, this is the flatter one. And actually, you know what? We're gonna use the more curved one. It's better if you can get boards that are nice and flat, but this is what we've got, so we're gonna use it. So we know it's 12 inches. To the center roughly so what we're going to do is go just kind of near the middle mark it at 12. mark it at 12 again a little bit to the other side of the middle and then along that line you know the board's about 10 inches about 20 inches across, so 10 inches to the center. And just make a mark. Just so you know where the center is. And it doesn't have to be the dead center, but just close. Then what you're gonna do, is you're gonna make a hole that's about the right size for your camera to peek through, but you want that hole to be tapered. You don't want it straight up and down. If you go this way, then you'll just have to flip the board over. And I'll make, I'll explain that in a bit. Uh, you want about half an inch or so. So I just kind of start digging in, cutting the chunk out. And this time we are going to eventually get all the way through the board. It's kind of harder to do with this. Honestly, if you have a utility knife, that kind of works better. These little snap knives, these little ones don't work that great for this. It does, it's not a big deal if you kind of cut into the board beneath it. It's not really going to hurt anything. Um, you might kind of have to take it out in pieces. It doesn't have to be this perfect neat hole. It's just got to be decent. I'm going to see if I can snap this knife. Nope, I'm going to hurt myself doing that. Okay, we'll just make do with what we got then. So keep going, digging down. And I actually went all the way through, but it's not tapered, but we can fix that. That's an easy fix. Just kind of come in and clean it up as best you can. And it's tapered for the most part, just down this one side. It's not great. This really is a dull knife. Try and use a sharp knife if you can. You'll save yourself later. I'll clean up that mess later. Oh, let's see, actually I didn't get all the way through the paper on the other side, so that's 
kind of a blessing in disguise. So now we just gotta cut through that. Just gonna kind of tear it off. Yeah, see, okay, still got this little chunk right here. Maybe you can see it right about there. Gotta get that out. What you don't want, again, is you don't want the white to show from this side. And some of you may have already figured out why that is. I'm just gonna see if I can just push this back. Okay, great. So now you've got these two pieces that are already split a little. This one is still flat on the bottom. You fold them and you set them about like so. And then you do the opposite, of course, on the other side. And then you set this on top. And that's all there is to making it. Now, if you have a light like this one, one of these little guys, it helps, but it's not necessary. And I'm actually gonna show you the result without using this. Now, there's, hold on, I'm gonna have to reposition the camera. So you've got your board cut. What you do is you just drop the camera down. I know I can't really show the camera itself, but here's your phone camera, right? Drop it down and what you wanna do Put it through so you're just looking at the foam core underneath. And then you take a Polaroid. Let me find one real quick. Here's one with Ben. You put it over this. Now, I normally run the cameras at vertical, and you're not usually shooting video. So I'll throw up a couple pictures at the end so you can see what it looks like when it's done. But notice that there's no glare on it. There's no reflection. It's just the image itself. No reflections at all. And it's because you have that matte finish. Maybe go through and clean that up. Sorry. But yeah, that's all there is to it. I'm just gonna pull the camera back off so you can see how the setup works. See, it's just the picture underneath like that, but we've managed to kill the glare because there's no direct sources of light. That's why it works so well. And yeah, here's going to be a few photos showing how clean it comes out. Thanks for watching.